So guys, today it's time for part three of my driver comparisons here on this channel. And today we're going to be looking at Fernando Alonso versus Sebastian Vettel. Two drivers who are very close together in terms of my all-time list when it comes to the greatest drivers of all time. And also, these two had quite a fascinating rivalry between 2010 and 2014. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about who for me is the best driver out of Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel by looking at plenty of key areas. So if you want to find out from me who I think the better driver is out of Alonso and Vettel, then make sure to check out this video. But before we get into looking at the key areas deciding who is better, let's first look at the key stats between Vettel and Alonso. So when it comes to race wins, Sebastian has 20 more on 52 compared to Fernando's 32. Alonso has 22 poles, Sebastian has 56. Vettel also has 117 podiums, Fernando has 97 and Sebastian of course has 4 world championships to Fernando's 2. Now stats wise, it does favour Sebastian Vettel a lot but as we have seen with Sebastian Vettel in his career, the stats do not tell the full story. So let's first get into the most key areas when it comes to pace and first off qualifying pace. Now, for me, Sebastian Vettel does take this one because plenty of times, even in cars that have maybe not been great, Sebastian has put in qualifying performances where he's got the best out of the car or even more a few times in his career. When it comes to Fernando Alonso, and I think even Fernando at times will admit this that qualifying is not quite his say cup of tea it's not where fernando is at his absolute best so i think sebastian will take it on qualifying pace but when it comes to race pace i think fernando takes this because as we've seen during fernando's career when he was racing in formula one even if he had a poor qualifying performance or the car was not performing well in the race even if his car wasn't that good he would still be very, very quick in his car, whatever car that was, compared to the people he was competing against. And that very good race pace allowed Fernando to get into positions he didn't really deserve to be in, in terms of the car's performance. With Sebastian Vettel, his race pace, I think, is good. It is consistent, but it's not a massive jump like it is with Alonso in terms of how much better his race pace is compared to his qualifying pace. So for me, Fernando takes that. And when it comes to pace in the wet, it is a close one between these two because these two drivers have had good performances in the wet. Fernando, of course, say in qualifying at Silverstone or Hockenheim in 2012. And of course, Sebastian Vettel at Shanghai 2009, Monza 2008, performances like that. But I think if you look at performances in the wet, I think Fernando has provided better performances in the wet and on a more consistent basis. Whenever it rained during Fernando's career, he would normally be right up there competing at the top of the field, of course, if his car you know, allowed him to. With Sebastian, it kind of ebbs and flows. Sometimes he's very good, but sometimes he's not really that good at all. So for me, Fernando Alonso takes it when it comes to wet weather pace, but when it comes to consistency, car management and car control, who's better when it comes to that? Well, when it comes to consistency, no doubt about it, Fernando Alonso is better at that because if you look at seasons such as, say, 2012, in a car that was not consistently able to be in the top four or five, Fernando at one point in the season was consistently putting his car in the top four or five on the grid. There's also other seasons where his car was better, where he was consistently going for the win every Grand Prix, such as 2006. Fernando, over his career, again, when his car isn't doing that well or is doing well, he tends to be very consistent during a season, during a race, and really during his career. With Sebastian Vettel, it kind of depends on what car he's driving, but sometimes when he dips in form, he doesn't really show how good he can be at times. And if you look at Fernando, Fernando did have dips in his career, but they weren't as big as, say, Sebastian has had. 
The biggest dips with Sebastian Vettel, of course, is from 2018 to now and also in 2014. For 80 or even 90% of Fernando's career, he has been performing at an elite level. So for me, when it comes to consistency, Fernando takes that. When it comes to car management, I'd go with Sebastian Vettel because, again, if you look at a couple performances he's had when his car has not been you know, in a good way and has been damaged, I think Sebastian is better at that. For example, again, Brazil 2012, where, of course, Sebastian and Fernando were in a fantastic final race for the World Championship. And still, that drive at Interlagos in 2012 was so good, and it was just so deserving of being in a championship-winning position. I don't think Sebastian actually, over the course of 2012, deserved to beat Fernando, because Fernando was in a car that was definitely a lot worse. But that drive at Brazil in 2012 was so, so good. And we haven't really seen Fernando have races where he's had to really manage the car like Sebastian in a couple of occasions. So for me, Sebastian takes that. And when it comes to car control, I'm going to go with Fernando Alonso because as we've seen plenty of times, whether he's trying to correct his car from crashing or correct it through a corner to continue on a lap or during a race, Fernando is so good at it. His reflexes have to be one of the best I've ever seen in Formula 1 history. And you don't really ever see Fernando crash a lot during a certain period of time. When he crashes, it tends to be a bit of a shock because, again, his car control is so, so good. Of course, with Sebastian Vettel, with his crashes in the last year or so, I think we can say that his car control is not really that good so fernando for me takes it on car control but now let's get on to another key area and that is racing overtaking and defending who's better at this well for overtaking i'm going to go for fernando alonso because in the races where fernando say has been starting in a grid position which is not that good and he has to fight back through the field he is so good at eventually somehow, some way getting past a driver because he has so much to his game when it comes to overtaking that it makes it so, so hard to keep him behind because he has the ability to go, you know, onto any piece of racetrack and make the overtake eventually work. Now, Sebastian Vettel has had some good overtakes and when he wants to, he can be a good overtaker, but... I don't believe he is as good at overtaking as Fernando is. And also, if you look at the race victories that Fernando and Sebastian have had in their careers, Sebastian has never won a race from the top three on the grid. He's never won from lower than third. Fernando has had races like Malaysia in 2012 or the 2012 European Grand Prix at Valencia or that race at the Spanish Grand Prix in 2013 where he brilliantly passed Kimi Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton around the outside at turn three. I don't believe that Sebastian Vettel would be capable of that. And also there's a couple overtakes Fernando has had in his career that for me make him stand out more than Sebastian, such as his overtake on Mark Webber at the second chicane at Monza and also overtaking Michael Schumacher right around the outside at 130R. Now, Sebastian has had good overtakes. One I remember that was very good was Valtteri Bottas at Silverstone in 2018 or on Valtteri Bottas at the Spanish Grand Prix 2017. But Fernando, for me, is just better in this area. Now we come to defending. Now, when I was looking at this area for who is better, I was struggling to think, you know, who could be better when it comes to this area. But then one performance stood out in Fernando Alonso's favour that for me means that Fernando is a better defender. Of course, it's Imola 2005 where he somehow, despite being in a car that was way slower at the time of the Ferrari of Michael Schumacher, he somehow kept him behind for so long and went on to win that Grand Prix. If Sebastian Vettel had been in Fernando's position, because of his mental deficiencies, which we'll get onto in a moment, and who's better when it comes to mentality, I don't believe that Sebastian Vettel would have held Michael Schumacher back 
for as long as Fernando did. And that performance for me was so, so great that Fernando has to take it when it comes to defending. But as I said, let's go on to the mentality of the two drivers. Now, when it comes to pushing within mental limits, I'm going to take Fernando on this one because we have seen at times where Sebastian Vettel is having to push hard or he's in a, you know, a tight race. Sebastian can make a simple error that leads to a disaster. Most of the time, Fernando has been able to you know, push very, very hard, even in a race where it's a hard race and he's in a tight fight with other cars. So I have to take Fernando on that one. We also have delivering laps and overtakes when it matters most. Now, for me, I'm going to split this one because I think Sebastian Vettel, when it came to qualifying mentally, was able to put in a lap that he really needed to compared to Fernando Alonso. But when it came to the races, I think Fernando was better mentally at putting in an overtake when he really needed to to get a better result. So for me, when it comes to this, it's a 50-50. Also consistently driving without little error. I don't believe there is really a debate here. Fernando takes that. And the last one when it comes to mentality is maintaining a great level despite being under great pressure. Now, I believe Fernando also takes this one because as we've seen with Sebastian Vettel, especially in the last couple of years, when the pressure gets on more with Sebastian, his performance does not tend to be as good as it would be when pressure is off but with Fernando he's a lot closer to his top top level than Sebastian is when pressure is really on and because of that that's why Fernando was such a menace and such a hard competitor for drivers like Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton or Kimi Raikkonen because even if again he wasn't in a great car because he was so good at maintaining a great level under massive pressure he was still able to be right there with those drivers who were at times in faster cars but that's all the key areas when it comes to Fernando Alonso versus Sebastian Vettel and as you can guess from what I've said for me Fernando Alonso is the better driver I think mentally Fernando is stronger I think what Fernando was able to do also in cars that were not that good is more impressive than some of the stuff Sebastian Vettel has done. And also, Fernando really is a better racer than Sebastian. And one last point that, for me, really does show why Fernando Alonso is better, in my opinion, than Sebastian Vettel, is that if you look at their respective times at Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel has had two big proper chances at winning the world championship at Ferrari and both times has bottled it. Fernando also in his time at Ferrari had two big chances to go for the world title. One of the times he did kind of bottle it but so did Ferrari and in 2012 I think Fernando did the best he could. But the one key thing you have to remember is that in the seasons Fernando went for the world championship compared to Sebastian. Fernando's car was, compared to the rest of the field, a lot worse. And the fact of the matter is, Fernando got closer to winning a world championship twice with Ferrari than Sebastian did in cars that were not as good. And that, for me, absolutely settles it. But in your opinion, guys, who is the better driver and for what reasons out of Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel? Let me know in the comment section down below. Yeah, guys, that has been it for this video. And also comment down below what you thought of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. My next video is coming out on Wednesday and that video will be a satirical look at the Red Bull driver program history. So until that video on Wednesday, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.